look at this beautiful spice rub. I'm gonna gently lay this down inside the pan, sauteing it so that both sides are nice and golden brown. And then I'll pop it in the oven to finish it up. You'll notice I haven't used any eggs or breadcrumbs. The proteins will naturally bind when cooked. I'm gonna keep this seasoning simple. Just a little bit of salt, some pepper. Simple. I wanna taste this elk. I don't wanna hide any of the flavors, I wanna taste it. I put all that work into getting it, I don't wanna hide those flavors, I wanna taste it. Incredible finish. Is there anything simpler than cooking in one pan? Whole roasting this line caught wild trout with all of these vegetables for me is the most perfect way to honor this incredible fish. This is my first black bear. We're here hunting on public land, and let me tell you, this is a night I'm never gonna forget. What the old timers taught me, it came true tonight, and we got this beautiful, beautiful black bear. Good evening, and welcome to Surefire Wednesdays. Boy, do we have an exciting night for you tonight. We've taken some of our favorite ingredients and we put them together to make this bear recipe. That's black bear, fantastic. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, we're here tonight, we're definitely making a good, you good food. We're coming to you every Wednesday with Surefire Wednesdays. We've got great recipes. I am Bailey Collins, this is my dad, Jonathan Collins. He's a good chef. I'm better, obviously, but you know, he's front and center. So listen, we've got enough of the nonsense. We've got some great recipes. So you can see in front of us here, we've got some vine tomatoes. We also have russet tomatoes. So the great thing about, we're gonna roast these right on the vine. So we're doing a black bear recipe that is gonna be wrapped in bacon. This is Dakota. This is my oldest son, Dakota. Good evening, everybody. So Surefire Wednesdays, and we say this all the time, but we have to say it again. Yep. Surefire Wednesdays is all about you, the viewer. Yep. We get all these great ideas from you. So we're professional chefs who just want to show how to make wild to table even better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and tonight we're going to be doing a couple giveaways again. Tonight we're going to be giving away this great Zwilling Pro blonde Santoku knife. Look at that thing. You're going to awesome. see how just absolutely razor sharp that thing is tonight. We're going to be doing a great drink tonight called the Big Easy, which is my take on a Sazerac. So that's going to be incredible. Yeah, so every week now we're going to have a companion drink. So Dakota is a bit of a mixologist. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting when you're talking about cooking, I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for a drink to make. Oh, yeah. And it's nice to kind of pair it. Now, the Sazerac oh, yeah. is a bold drink. Oh, yeah. And this? Very, bold. <laughs> very, very bold. You got black bear, bacon, rosemary smoked. I mean, I don't think it get much bolder. No. Now, listen, whenever you go to smoke, you're thinking, okay, I got to get the, the pellets out. Got to get the hickory going. Yep. No, we're going to make it so much easier than that. What I've got is I've got a grill pan. So we're going to literally smoke indoors. You must be like, okay, how are you going to smoke with a grill pan? <laughs> well, <clears throat> excuse me. The way we're going to do that is literally by taking branches of rosemary. So you dr you kind of drench in a little bit of fat, and what happens is when the heat hits bear it, fat. yeah, bear, bear fat. Bear fat. Uh, when the heat hits it, you're going to start getting that beautiful rosemary flavor. Now, you know, wild to table really for some of us like we had 
uh, back strap or loin from yeah. the bear when yeah. we were at bear camp. Oh yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> that was delicious. That was good. Yeah, well you guys, you, actually you I, fell asleep. I fell asleep. You fell asleep. Fell asleep. Fell asleep. He's sitting there and he's like, he wakes up and he's like, what's that smell? I said, well we, co we cooked up some bear, do you want some? Dad? Dad, you want some? <laughs> he was already back out. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, one thing about um, one thing about uh, hunting is you've got to be in shape. Out. So I, I'm getting there. Hey. I'm getting hey. there. Hey. I gotta do. Hey, listen, have you been checking out these trained to hunt videos? Oh, yeah. uh, we've been Botex been covering it I since I think Saturday. Next, I, I want to do. I, I wanna like. Do, do they have an old timers? And I think it's all together. In yeah. his defense, round is still a shape. Can I like add it? <laughs> round is still a shape. It's That's still really a shape. Nice. Okay. Anyway, so uh, the great thing about this particular recipe, as I was saying, is it does make it more palatable. So you get it back home. Yeah. There's a few things we have to deal with when we talk about uh, bear. Bear has to be cooked to 165 degrees internal temperature. Yep. And what that means is sometimes it makes it very tough. So we want to find ways to keep flavor and keep moisture in there. Yep. And let's face it, bacon, it's nature's glue. It, it is. is. You know, I think glue. God said pig, and what he was really doing is looking underside going, bacon, glue, yep. glue. glue. And so, I mean, like he said, he said earlier today, he brought up a great point, you know, like if say you, you fling an arrow through uh, the top or in, and you want to cook, say the lung, for example, yes. or something like that. Yep. And you know, you have a tear through it. The best way, you're like, oh man, how do I keep this together? Wrap it in nature's glue. <laughs> And so the other thing the bacon does, obviously, there's some smokiness in the bacon. You have that natural fat. Yeah. It's something I want to start off with, which I think is so exciting. So we were talking about using all of the bear. So whatever animals we kill and yeah. harvest, we want to make sure we, we kind of challenge each other to use it, you know, to the best of our ability. Yeah. So this is really cool. Um, what I've got here is I've got some bacon fat rendering. And so Cole's going to grab the camera here and I want you to see. This is all bear fat. So this is all bear fat. Been rendering, uh, so for you at home, if you're asking, okay, well like how long did that take? This has been rendering, rendering for about two hours, but the thing that amazed me is look at that beautiful amber color. So I want to get a good look at this. So let's pour it out and have a have a really good look. Hey, just hold that for me. Yep. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So what I have here, show them that strainer. You want to get yourself it doesn't have to be a chinois like this. It can be just a fine mesh strainer, but that fine mesh is what you're going to want. You want to get, there's going to be, obviously, there might be uh, some hair in there. There could be some things that you don't want, but honestly, look how, look wow. I mean, it looks like I'm pouring out vegetable oil. It looks incredible. It looks incredible. So what other fats do we use and treat like this when, as hunters? Well, I can tell you right now, there's never a goose or a duck that we do, we literally we would not waste a single bit of uh, goose or duck fat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start prepping this pan. Now you'll notice a lot of times I use cast iron. The boys and I love it for a number of reasons. It holds the heat when you're sautéing. When you're roasting, it radiates the heat beautifully. And look at this. So I'm going to start this. I'm literally just going to start by putting some of this fat in the bottom of the pan. Look at that. And so what we've got is we use some, you can roll that around in there, Bailey, get it completely coated. We want a nice uh, level uh, or a nice layer on the bottom. Roll it around completely. Nice. Now, normally you've, you've heard me say time and again, preheat the pan, preheat the pan. And that's true all the time. With this exception, what we've got here, let's show them, right? We just took some russet potatoes. So yeah. Bailey, the difference between this one and this one is this one's cooked. This one's cooked. So you can peel the russet beforehand, but I'm telling you, try it uh, blanching it with the skin on. It's completely different. Well, and then what we're going to do, yeah, go ahead. There's a ton of flavor in this. A ton of skin. flavor. It's the same thing with like people, I see people, they peel apples and stuff like that. You're missing so much of the flavor that's in that skin. You what? If you take the time, Boil a potato with the skin and without the skin. And try, try the taste difference. the difference. Yeah. So just real gentle and see how easy that comes off. You can even peel it with your That's fingers. That's what you do. Yep. And so what we have here, Bay's going to start working on this. But the reason that we selected the russet potato is that, that uh, it's kind of flaky, okay? What we're looking for is something that's kind of irregular. We're literally just going to start. We're going to put some of these in, layer them, layer them in here. And then we're going to make sure to get a complete coating. So while Bailey's working on that, we're going to start on some other things. 
But isn't bear fat incredible? One of the smells, I'll just tell you, the smell is so much richer than a pork fat or beef fat. It smells incredible. So when you're harvesting bear this year, don't get rid of that fat. Get it in the cooler, let it freeze, get it home, and then take a few hours. And basically what you're doing by rendering it, you're just purifying it. You're going to bring it up to 165 degrees. And that brings up a really important point. We want to make sure that we uh, remember that with bear, just like we have to cook chicken till it's fully done, black bear is the same thing. That's for food safety, and you want to make absolutely certain you cook it to 165 degrees. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that color is good. Look at that. Yeah, actually, the uh, viscosity is amazing to me. It's not it's really as thin. thick, actually. Yeah, it's well, really and it's thin. a little warm, so it, oh, course, okay. yeah, as it, it'll thicken up a bit as it yep. cools. But that's perfect. So Bailey's working on that. And uh, so now we're going to, one of the other ingredients we're going to use, and I want, by the way, we want to hear from you. So don't sit there quiet and watch. This is about a conversation. <laughs> uh, the uh, Surefire Wednesdays is all about a conversation. So can anybody out there tell me what this is? I want to hear from you. Come on. You one know what this favorites. is. Come on. This is one of our favorites. So we're pairing this with some bold flavors. And what we're going to do is we're going to prepare this, uh, these uh, greens and we're going to saute them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I know, I just said greens. Okay. Um, then the other thing we're going to do, as I said, we're going to wrap these in bacon. Mm. But in just a minute, I'm going to show you how to take a modest size backstrap and make it look really big and bold. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just back to the potato here for a second. What you want to do after you get it fully peeled, just lay it on its side and cut it right in half. Flop it back over again, cut it in half again, and what you end up with is almost like these potato wedges. Yeah. And they fit perfectly in the bottom of the pan and soak up all that fat and juices that it after you're done cooking, and they taste amazing. And the nice thing about the russets is uh, that because they are flaky, what happens is, is with intense heats, we're going to throw them in there like 450. That intense heat is going to cause them to kind of flake up a bit. And you know, uh, food and te is as oh. much about texture as it is flavor. I mean, if you put together some of the textures we got going on here, we always say eat with your eyes first. So we're going to do some of these amazing vine tomatoes, right? I mean, look at those on the vine. Imagine that coming out to your plate. Then you got this bear wrapped in bacon. And then we're going to have these golden brown russet potatoes. And then these greens. Make sure you guys tell us what they are. What Come are the on. greens? I, mean, I haven't yeah. heard from anybody yet. But these greens and them on the side, so you got green, red. This will be a nice golden color. The potatoes will be a bright, bright gold color. I mean, like, it couldn't look any better than that. Take that baby up there and show them. So that, that new Santoku knife from Zwilling, that, ha that is, they have oak candles. So that oak is home oak, found in the Mediterranean. This is a piece of artwork yep. in your kitchen. It's beautiful. It's got that classic Zwilling Pro uh, profile. And I'm telling you, it is a great knife. We want to put it in your hands. But all you have to do is like this broadcast, share this broadcast, post, tell us something. Tell us why we should give it to you, and then tag a friend. Yep. So what I've got now, I've got these beautiful uh, vine tomatoes in the pan, and I'm just literally, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil over top. So I'm using olive oil in this case because I want to mix things up a little bit. Use, I could, obviously I could use a bare fat here, but I'm going to use the olive oil. They're glistening, they're bright and beautiful, and then just some simple seasoning. One of the things you want to be careful with is when you could use, like you said, bare fat again here, but... Then what's going to happen is when you get this to the plate, it's just going to be a lot of oil. It's going to be oil on everything, and oil is, as you know, real tough to kind of get rid of. So the main reason that we're using these uh, tomatoes, just in your mind, stop for a second. Think about what roasted tomatoes taste like, or even a fresh tomato if you've mm -hmm. not had roasted. They're slightly acidic. Yep, yeah. So what's going to happen in our palate, on your tongue, is that as you're tasting that the fat from the pork, uh, from the bacon and the fat from the bear, yep. what's going to happen is the tomato is a bit of a palate cleanser. Yep. yep, and I mean one of the things you'll see that why we've paired this particular drink with it is that brandy in its nature is fortified wine and they actually use early grapes so that the, uh, the, uh, the brandy is actually more acidic so once again you're going to get that acidity to clean your palate from all any types of fat is in any of the dishes. The longer that the grapes are on the vine, minimum of 100 days, yep. the sugar increases. 
So when you're taking an early harvest grape, of course the acidity is higher than the sugar, and that's what makes for this perfect. You want to pull? That's really great. Okay, so let's, uh, you know what? What I want to do with this now is we want to put some more fat on top. Let's grab that camera and we'll, yep. we'll talk a bit more about this. So you can imagine how satisfying it is to uh, just, uh, actually I'll hold there for a second. Yes, Cindy. Great question, Alicia. So how long can this last? Uh, not unlike duck fat and other animal fats, I wouldn't keep this in the refrigerator for more than two to three days in this, in this uh, in, you know, in a liquid format. But get this into the freezer. I would say, now keep in mind, the one great thing about Surefire Wednesdays is as professional chefs, we are testing all of this. Yep. So this is the very first time that we've cooked with uh, bear fat. And, uh, but I know from understanding animal fats that you've got a minimum of three months and a maximum of a year. Now, I've heard, I've heard different things about bear fat once it's been frozen. Yeah. So I'm gonna we're going to have to check in. I'm going to have to tell you. I'm going to check in. Check with me in three months. We'll be using this again. So this is going to be going into our freezer. But keep in mind, everything that goes into my fridge and everything that goes into my freezer, I always date it. That way I know when it went in. and It'll tell me a bit of a story so I get yeah. to know the ingredients even better. So literally all I'm going to do now, yes, Cindy? We've got our first entry. Okay. Justin, I mean, he really, he really wants his knife. He said, I need a good knife to prepare dinner for my pregnant wife. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> hey, listen. Card. All on the pregnant card. You Lily, the wife. It's not that. a pregnant card. You've never had kids, so be quiet. Justin? <laughs> That's I'm very nice. Sad. You were two little <laughs> girls long enough, buddy. <laughs> so don't hesitate on this uh, fat. We want to make sure we really give this a good coating. Any of the excess can just be uh, literally, it'll just stay in the bottom of the pan. And what we want to do, grab some thyme there, Bailey. Want to do a few things here. Strip off some of those beautiful thyme leaves. And we're going to tuck this, literally, I'm going to, I'm going to put a couple whole pieces of the rosemary inside. Because all I want that to do, that's going to flavor that uh, beautiful oil. And then literally strip off a whole bunch of that. So what's happening here, you know, as you add the thyme, the thyme is going to give it an incredibly woodsy uh, flavor and fragrance. It's going to look beautiful. It's going to smell beautiful. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Keeping some fresh thyme and rosemary when you're doing wild to table, well, that's, that's critical. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll go with a little bit of pepper here. Nice pepper. Of course, the pepper, because, and always, listen, always fresh ground. Always fresh ground. As soon as you add a little bit of heat by grinding with those peppercorns, it activates that oil in the peppercorns, and you're going to get a lot better result. Yep. Then I've got some flake sea salt, and we want to season these right now. Those look amazing. Look good, eh? Mm. You know, we'll tuck a couple bay leaves in there. Just for a second here, while Code's up close, look at these two dishes side by side. If you ever have friends coming over and you don't feel like doing a lot of work but impressing the heck out of them, look at this. You put this in two pans in front of your friends and they'll love it. This lo looks amazing. It looks amazing, right? So we're pretty happy with this. These are going to be our beautiful sides. So these are going to go in. We've got our oven preheated. Let's bring these over. Got our oven preheated. Now listen, having the, the right tools is critical. And I'm telling you right now, if you've not heard of Fulgor Milano, you got to look them up. They're our, uh, our partner in the kitchen. And look at this. This is spectacular. So I've got this on convection roast. Now what I want to do is I'm going to throw it at 375. We're going to throw that up to 450. Now it's your job. you got to watch it. We're going to throw the heat on it. The tomatoes can take it. The potatoes can take it. And uh, it's going to be beautiful. All right. So... We're doing good here. Yeah, We're doing good. good. Yeah, you're doing a good job. It's good. Yeah, thank you. I so, told you I was a better cook. <laughs> so what we have now, we got a giveaway. Let's show what we gave away last week. And we're going to announce our winner. We're so excited. It, honestly, there's nothing better than giving stuff away. So we have the, the new, brand new Cuisinart Precision Master stand mixer. Yep. We have it in white and red and gunmetal gray. And we have a winner. The winner is coming up. The winner is... And this threw us off a bit because he's Canadian as well as Mike Myers. Mike Myers, right? So. <laughs> Mike Myers. And we thought like we were gonna be like this groovy baby. <laughs> <laughs> this bear is groovy baby. But uh, Mike Myers, he said um, he's liking and sharing our posts. He would love the white mixer. It would be 
for my awesome wife. She's embracing Brackett's new hunter, the outdoors, and is going hunting with me, and we are both learning to cook. This would be an awesome tool for us to use together. Thanks for your consideration. That's, That's awesome. awesome. So, you know, one of our, uh, one of our kind of cornerstone sayings that's developed, I think, since we started hunting, but also in the kitchen, uh, is slow is smooth. And smooth is fast. Is fast. Smooth is fast. It's a great saying because it, uh, it talks a little bit about what you have to do to make good food. You have to slow things down a little bit. But you know what happens when you do? You slow things down, you start to cook, yeah. all of a sudden, people start coming around a little bit more. Yeah. Get you know, fun, you yeah. know, it's involving all, your family. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about cooking with love. Even something as simple as the potatoes we showed you earlier. Yes, it may be a little harder and take a little extra time to peel the skin off afterwards, but you've developed the flavor in your dish more. It's I'm all about taking that, that extra 10 minutes but I've actually timed it, eh? No, it's a good point, but I've actually timed it. Is it the same? It, it's actually less time to peel it this way. Oh, really? by the way, little thing I forgot to mention is make sure that when you're peeling them with the skin on, make sure the potatoes are warm. If they've gone cold, it's going to be a little hard, bit more difficult. Yeah, when they're still warm, it makes it easy. And they stay warm for a long time, so there's no panic. By the way, if you're doing a mashed potato, trust me, the next time you're doing a mash, do them this way, then put them in the food mill, the, t the flavor difference is amazing. Yeah. Of course, you could also have roasted these skin on. That would have been great too. But we want us to do something that's going to pair beautifully. Black bear is an unbelievably, you know, for me, you know, the, just being able to cook with black bear is just blowing my mind, to be honest. Because, you know, you can't go to, you can't go to the uh, local butcher yeah, right. and buy black bear. So you've got to go out there, you have to do the hard work that I know you do. Now we've got, we've got our second black bear hunt coming up yeah. starting on August 15th. Yeah. Now one of the things we're going to pride ourselves on in the late summer and fall and winter is we're going to keep coming to you live with yeah. Surefire. We're going to do it right from camp. We've got a new system that will boost our uh, cellular yeah. signal. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if i got to put Bailey on the top of a tree holding on to an <laughs> antenna, we're going to come right, to you live. Yeah. Yep. Um, the so, fun, yeah, the fun thing about this fall is that the place that we're going for black bear is actually our original site first that we site. went to yep. our first year of hunting, yep. in which we went a little late. So, this time we're going three days after season opened. Last yep. time we went three days before, before it closed. closed. And so, I <laughs> think we're learning something? As you all know, they were already asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> they not, were that's not true. It's, I was about to say this before. Is it was crazy the full circle was sitting here cooking bear. I was going to talk about the first time we ever saw a bear. It was after the season ended, yep. and we were driving out the day after. The day after the, day after, after the season closed. And the first yeah. time we ever saw a bear was a bear ran across the road in front of us, yep. and I, I literally don't think we even said anything. We were just amazed. Yep. We were like, "We just saw a black bear! <laughs> Come on!" When he talks about great tools in the kitchen, he, uh, my daddy had mentioned this tool for potatoes. This is, what's this called? So the food mill. This is a food, food mill. mill. Or so the ricer, right? The ricer yeah, works ricer. great too. So what, the way that this works is when you put your potatoes in, you think, oh, well, I can just mash them. But this, the texture that this tool creates is incredible. And as you grind it, it pushes it through those holes there. And the texture is amazing. Yeah, it's better texture. If you whip it often, you'll know that it develops those strands, those glutinous yep. strands. You don't want something that's a little bit like wallpaper paste. You want it like <laughs> potatoes. Yes, Cindy. Dylan would like to know how much a black bear takes in Canada. That's a good question. Uh, black bear tags, if you're an Ontario <laughs> resident, is $44. So yeah, I mean, it, and I think uh, non-resident uh, is uh, no, it's uh, two forty something. I believe something, something, yeah. something like that. Okay. Right? So for a non-resident, that's yeah. a great question. We'll actually put that in the post later. I can tell you one thing: coming here for black bear is a special thing. Um, there's a couple ways to hunt them here. Uh, when we go north, the uh, the terrain is a little more sporadic. What's that? How much is it for? Yeah. So, yeah, right. Good point. Yeah, with the exchange, it'll probably be less for you. You'll come back with money. Yeah, you'll come back with money. Uh, but one of the great, yeah. great things about is the two different ways we can hunt. Yeah, I mean, like up north, we have what we call Canadian Shield. So as we go, what we call the French River, as we go past that, the Wrong. whole ground changes. There's no, uh, no deciduous left. It all changes to coniferous. And it's just bedrock through and through. You know, you go to drive a stake into the ground, you can't even go. Even yep. because it's just all bedrock. And so when we go up there, 
That style of hunting that we'll be doing up there is spot and stock because we can get high yep. and look over a large area and then get our stock on. But then down in this area, there are a lot of people do baiting or what they'll do is they'll sit in an area for an entire day where they know there's a large population of bears. Yep, yep absolutely. Okay, so let's uh, recap. We've got our sides. So we've got a couple really good sides. Now think about these potatoes. These potatoes, if you don't have bear fat, use duck fat. If you don't have duck fat, use yep. goose fat. If you don't have goose fat, use canola oil or use something like that. Yep. But I guarantee you, the way we're doing these potatoes right now, you're going to love it. And then those vine tomatoes. I mean, those. talk about the technique that you did to do that. It's so simple, right? Yeah, so the nice thing about this is, uh, for the bear fat, yep. uh, is just make sure to keep the temperature so you're not going to begin to really burn or yeah. to caramelize the bear fat. So you want to keep it, you know, 165 degrees yep. is perfect. Uh, lets it continue to render. What it's doing, it's just melting, 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 melting. So melt it down. We're going to continue. I still have this on super low simmer right now. Yep. I'm going to continue to melt that down, getting every last bit of it out. And then I'll strain it. I'll probably even maybe pour it through cheesecloth. Yep. Just to make sure it's super, super pure. Then I'll put it in uh, probably Ziploc. Yep. And then we'll freeze it solid. And then it'll yep. always be there. Nice thing about putting it you know, in Ziploc, you can pull it out and with a knife, you can always nick off a piece. Or like another great thing that you could do is if you buy extra ice cube trays, put in the ice cube oh, tray. Oh, that's even better. Break it up and oh, then, I love and that then idea. dump those in it. So you can just go, oh, I'm just cooking, grab an ice cube out, you got a piece it's of bear. It's starting fat. to bubble here in the, Looking good? In the oven here. That smells, it smells so this. good. It smells you guys incredible. know that it smells that comes incredible. out of your oven? Oh, yeah. And it blows in your face? That's what we're getting. Out of here. So let's, uh, let's show them how to do these turnados. So, yep. uh, yeah, grab the camera, okay. let's do a little, uh, so this is the way, looking at this beautiful backstrap or loin, I was thinking to myself, how can we make this, you know, we do, we've done a lot of rustic dishes, how can we make this a little more elegant? And this is not a massive, this is just uh, actually the smallest end of the loin. It's not huge, but you know, how do you make this something that's kind of presentable? Something that would be enough for a portion. So what I do, what we'll do is we take and slice this in half. That's that beautiful Santoku knife I'm telling you about. And then literally half again, but don't slice all the way through. Make a pass like that, same here. And as we do, look at this, we'll turn it like this, Bay. Oh, nice. And then what you have is you've taken something that's kind of like a little bit anemic, a little small, yeah. and you've made it really quite nice. And this bacon, I like this, it's, it's kind of a thinner bacon. So what's nice is that it almost acts like call fat. Now, if you've never used call fat before, it's like a beautiful wrap from the stomach. I that, forgot about call fat. Yeah, that holds things together beautifully. So if the bacon is nice and thin, what you end up, so I put one there, and then because I have to cook this a long time, I always put two pieces of bacon on. Um, you know, obviously, if it was beef and you had the luxury of cooking it to, like, maybe 135 degrees, you could just put one piece or on. There's no need to use any skewers. There's no need to use anything to hold it together. That protein is going to lock that up. Literally, take, and you can see how you could prep these ahead of time. Now, something that's kind of cool, I like this idea. Thanks, bud. I like this idea. Now, imagine if you did this ahead of time. So if you had, if before I froze this, so I thawed this today, and quick note about thawing, you'll hear me say this again and again, yep. but you got to uh, thaw in cold water. Cold water. Have to do it. Don't put it on the countertop. For food safety, you have to put it in cold water. So what I would do is, if you did this when it was fresh, imagine how much fun this would be making these and then vac sealing them individually. Yes. So you can literally pop out a, a little turnado of black bear wrap bacon. Could be dinner for two, could be dinner for one. But you can see, like Dakota was saying, how it doesn't matter what the, uh, what the meat is, that you can use that bacon, and it just holds everything together like a beautiful like glue. glue. There yeah. we go. Very nice. So that is our version of black bear. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Yes. Same. Yeah, so no, you don't have to draw for one. What you have to do is you do have to go with a registered guide, though. 
I, so I wish well I wish what we could start doing is start instead of giving away like a knife or something like Trips. you drive up here and we guide you on a bear or something that'd be awesome. Hey. We just got to get our outfitting. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll but do yeah, that. so we'll no, you have to go. You have to go with a registered outfitter up here, which will run you Canadian around anywhere from depending where you go, six fifty yeah. to two thousand yeah. dollars depending on where you go. But like we said before, right? The Canadian, the U.S. Yeah. dollar, it comes up. It costs saves you thirty percent. Thirty percent the cost when you come up here. And let me tell you, the black bears up here are incredible. I mean, yeah. Alberta has amazing black bears, but when we were up at our spring camp that we were just at, we had this beautiful around five, five fifty, five hundred fifty yeah. pound black bear. Back for him. He walked and he went jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Yeah, jiggle, 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 jiggle. And, it, and it was he, and it was he had spring. some junk in the trunk. And it was spring, yeah. right? So yeah. I can't imagine what this guy looks like. In the fall. Well, once he's, yeah. yeah, I mean, and the other thing is, if you do get up here, by the way, uh, anybody who's interested, we got a couple of good friends, we can yeah. hook you up, yeah. put, it, uh, put a message in there, we'll connect you with them. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the guys who's really mentored us in a big way, um, a good friend of ours, uh, Paul Gerard, uh, we can connect you with him and he can sort yeah. you out for the fall. But keep in mind that when you come up to, the fishing is incredible. Yeah, we have like some yeah. of the nicest lakes in the world, right? Like yeah. the, the fishing up here, walleye, perch, trout, anything you want to do, right? Like. It's sick, and I mean, Paul Gerard, for example, he's got his regular camp, and then but he's got his north camp, so it's fly in, and I mean, basically, you go like this, you cast a line before it hits the water, the wall, like literally jump out and grab it out of the air. <laughs> we found a It's little, like uh, the dreams you have, but it's real. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing right now, do we have anybody who's who's gonna venture a guess on what we have here? Nobody at all. Collard greens. Collard greens. <laughs> Come on, collard greens. So listen, I also want to tell you one, another thing that yep. keep in mind that just because the broadcast is, uh, is going to be, uh, oh, when it's over, you can still enter to win this yeah. incredible night. Oh, so yeah. we don't give them away until next Wednesday. So if you're watching this after the live, yep. enter now. Also, we want to answer your questions. So we're watching the questions. Keep asking them. Ask them now. Yep. And, and ask them after it's over as well. And also, lastly, if you have anything you want to cook, anything you've had trouble with, anything yeah. you want to see, yep. I don't know what you want to do. Do you want, like, moose burgers on Yorkshire's? I don't yeah. care. You just anything. name it, challenge us. Well, I mean, to be honest, right, like, if, if you give us a recipe, then we don't have to sit here and think about it. You can just give it to us, and we got less work to do. Yeah. Well, our, our last two recipes came in from you guys, and the one was, uh, was actually a venison pizza. But we went and we did a duck breast pizza, and then the other. What one, was the other one? What was the one? Oh, the, one the Philly cheesesteak. Oh, the Philly cheese the steak. venison Philly cheesesteak was incredible. That that by far was the yeah. best thing I've ever had in my entire life. So keep in mind that all of these broadcasts that you hear us talking about, they're still available. They're yeah. available. So you can see these if you go to the Botech site, BotechArchery.com. Yeah. You can see them there. We've got them archived. And listen, we're going to keep doing these. By the end of this year, we're going to have 52 of these, yep. and we're just going to keep going. Yep. But we want to uh, we want to customize. Yep. Surefire, you know, it's interesting. The the boat the Botech bows, the rain. Oh, what yeah. is it? Tunable. Yeah. Surefire Wednesdays, it's tunable. It's tunable <laughs> to you because we want to make food smart, that you love. Smart recipes. Smart recipes, <laughs> and and you know they're they're wild to table, and we're doing the hard work. We're finding we're finding the subject matter. Yeah. So we've got a, an amazing this, season coming up. Coming. We've got duck, we've got goose, oh. we've got rabbit, we've yeah. got pheasant, we've got grouse, we've got bear, we've got whitetail, we've got elk. I mean, come on. Yep. Do you know how many incredible recipes that's going to make? You know how much, how much meat that is. Yes. yes. Question. Oh, I just went over to Diamond and we did actually have some guesses. We had Swiss chard and mustard greens. Okay, oh, yeah. nice. Swiss chard very close. Yeah, very, very close. Very so that's close. good. Yeah, the Diamond folks, hey, they're sharp. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. We refuse to follow. Okay? Yeah, that's right. We refuse well, to follow. Well, see, Botech, the smart bows, they just let them do it for themselves. Do them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so we got to keep cooking. What are we talking? Okay, we've been rolling now for 40 minutes. Listen, thank you for staying with us. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We're yep. going to start with something really exciting. Yep. We're making a drink. Yeah, yeah drink. so the drink I'm going to show you tonight, I'm going to call it the Big Easy. And I mean, it's my take on a drink called the Sazerac. And a Sazerac 
is derived from New Orleans. And if you go to New Orleans and ask for a drink that represents New Orleans, they're going to serve you a Sazerac. It's one of the oldest American cocktails. It's made with brandy back in the day, but now usually made with rye whiskey, but we're going to stick to its roots. We're going to use rye. We're going to use uh, some of this beautiful brandy here. Got absinthe here, which is a beautiful, the, the flavors coming out of that absinthe are just incredible. And my additive is some Cointreau, some rosemary, some lemon, and some bitters. You Thank said they, they had a different name in the States for the... Absinthe. Yeah, uh, herbanium. So in the States, in the United States, it's actually illegal nowadays to call it absinthe. I don't know what they legislated, but it's illegal now. So if you're looking for it, it's called herb sink. Same thing. I'm just going to grab my ice. Are you going to grab that for me? So look at some of these. I'm just going to read off some of these ingredients. So absinthe, the flavors from it are incredible. So you t I was talking about that aroma. Fennel, anise, grapefruit peel, coriander, wormwood, angelica root, star anise. La I mean, I could just keep going, but the flavor is incredible. What we're going to do to start off is I'm just going to take some of this ice. And we're going to drop it in this first glass here. i got to tell you, while Dakota's working on this, I remember when your mother and I, we were in France, and yep. I was with a good friend of mine, uh, Chef Eric, if you're listening, uh, and we were driving, he, he was like, uh, that's uh, I, he, absinthium. So, oh, absinthium, so, yeah. so the perennial that this grows from, yep. the, the community had a field of it out there, okay? Yep. So we're talking like, you know, when you're in <laughs> Kentucky, it's like bootleg, right? Yep. Moonshine. Well, when you're in the hills of France, it's bootleg absinthium. absinthium. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean... But you, I, I, I don't recommend it because no. like the side effects it'll mess you up. Yeah, <laughs> like it's not good for it. There's a reason that, you know, the stuff that we have here is a little bit more regulated, but it, it's I refined. Think you've all seen the movies where, you know, yeah. send you on a loop, yeah. it'll do that to you. So, but this won't. This is the most. This is oh. so smooth, so beautiful. And so like we were talking about, we've always done a lot of rustic dishes. This dish is a little bit more refined, so we're going to go with a little bit more of a refined drink. So I'll show you here. We're going to start right here. I've got some raw sugar. So you put that water in there to chill the glass? Yeah, so this is actually really cool. If you hadn't had time to toss your glasses in the fridge when your guests show up, all you got to do right before you toss some ice in there, some water, and this that. glass is actually chilling. It's ready yeah. to go. Okay. So you just seen I tossed some raw sugar in there. This is bitters. Bitters is basically your seasoning of the drink world. It's your salt and pepper. I'm going to put about three dashes in there. Add some water. And you'll see what I'm actually doing here is I'm creating a simple syrup. And a simple syrup is basically 50% sugar, 50% water. i to take one of these and start just grinding this up. Dude, you're using an antler. Antler. That's a good shed. <laughs> so, uh, shed, 101. <laughs> shed 101. Shed 101, keep them all. Keep you'll them always all. have a use for them. No need to buy muddlers. You can use your antlers for muddlers. So you'll I just love see, it. As that sugar comes together with that water, it's just creating that simple syrup. And so this is going to be sweet. It's going to bring the sweetness to this drink. And you'll see as we touch on all the other flavor profiles, bitter, astringent, this is our sweet flavoring. And, you know, the nice thing about that natural sugar is it is so oh, much more flavorful. It is. Right? Yeah. So that raw sugar, that natural sugar, it's really inexpensive, but I'm telling you, the drinks, we love it. So oh, you'll see that's brought together there. Beautiful color nice already. Color. It smells Look at that. amazing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop ice in this glass here. And there's large pieces here. That'll do. <laughs> we're going to go to our brandy. And I'll toss this recipe up on our website right afterwards, but we're going to go with a shot and a half here, one and a half ounces of that beautiful brandy. Mm. Brandy or cognac is what they used to use. Cognac is simply just from the town of Cognac in France. Same thing. Brandy is called brandy if it is from France. And once again, we're going to use some Cointreau from France. This is going to bring some beautiful orange flavors to this. I'm checking the, I'm just going to, I got a signal, check the stove, so I don't want to, I don't want to, like, feel your thunder here, <laughs> but I got to pull the tomatoes, and okay. I want you to see this. Have Go see those nice tomatoes. Customer. Let's see the tomatoes. You didn't see anything. I saw you pour a little extra. Look at this. Are you uh, kidding I'm me right now? You. Look at Look that. that. Smell that. So, oh. now the key is, don't touch them. Yeah. Leave them alone. Yeah. So I'm going to put this over on my, uh. Yep. On my heating, 
iron here. Well, and the great thing about the vines is you may not eat the vines, but the moment you pull those out of the oven, the smell coming out of those vines is just incredible. It smells like there's a tomato plant in here. The other thing that's in there, and you're not even going to believe it, but what you have, eh, tomato is water. you have tomato water there that's reducing. So if you can imagine a concentrated tomato juice, yep. literally what we're going to do is when we go to serve this, we're going to take and some of the spoon, that, spoon some of that on. So yep. back to the drink. Back Sorry. to the drink. So now Same we have... Yes. Yeah, we got a quick question. So one question I have... Yep. They do. they do. Oh, the stand mixer, they have a beautiful. Yep. You keep, I'm going to grab the meat grinder. You can okay. Your drink. Yeah, meat grinder, ice cream, right? Ice cream, ice bowl, cream, pasta, pasta maker, yeah. pasta extruder that has everything. So you'll see we've added our liquor now. Quantro went in about an ounce. Now, we're going to take our chilled glass here. We're just going to let that chill, chilled glass. Just dump that water out. Make it a little violent so all the water comes out. And then we're going to take some of this absinthe. Now absinthe, as you'll see, is you don't need a lot of it. Uh, this stuff here is 70%, so you don't need a lot. You're just going to do about a quarter ounce in there. You can see that glass is chilled. Chilled glass? Yep. And then what we're going to do with that absinthe is just start working it around that glass. I smell that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, you know what it reminds me of, eh? Yeah. It's like Jaeger. Oh yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. You have it all those herbs incredible. in there, everything, all your spices. Yes. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Things to keep in mind when you're making drinks for your guests as you do a bunch of these at a time, like say you're working this around, keep your fingers off the rim of the glass. People don't want your fingerprints and all that yeah, all I know, over no, good point. where their mouths are. So anyways, we're just going to work this around the glass, and what that's going to do is that's just going to start to coat that glass, and when you bring it up to your mouth to drink it, you're going to get that... It's licorice almost immediately. It is. And, you know, here's a little side note. If you ever ask why to use glass versus crystal, oh, yeah. the nice thing about crystal, think about cardboard. So if you look at this, yep. view, this stainless glass is like this, perfectly smooth. Yep. But if you use crystal, crystal has these small little corrugations. Pores. Yep. Pores. And what happens is as you roll it around, yep. it aerates it and gives that beautiful fragrance to the drink. By the way, there's that grinder. It's a boss. <laughs> And uh, tons of power, 500 watts, yep. all you'll ever need. Oh, you, yeah. grind, you grind a whole deer in there in no time. So anyways, you just work that around the glass, coating the entire glass. That glass is done. This has been chilling now as we work that around. I'm just going to toss a strainer on there and pour that in. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Set that aside. Let's take there for a sec. Okay, and now we need to dress this glass up. I'm going to show you two different garnishes here. One, we're just going to take a lemon. I'll show you here. Grab my little board here. I'm going to cut a little wedge. And what you want to do with a lemon, if you're going to put it on the edge of a glass, is you want to find the little vein that runs Cut along that, and then we would just stick that right on the edge of the glass, just like that, serve it out. But the other technique I'm going to show you, and one that kind of fits with this glass a little bit better, because we're doing a more refined touch, is that we're going to, we're just going to peel some of the good. zest. Oh man, it smells so good. You can just use a regular peeler. It smells amazing, eh? Oh man, it smells so good. And so as you can see, like anything, you could do a bunch of these all at once before your guests show up. We're just going to go like this. Take anything round. This is just a chopstick. We're just going to wrap this around, just like this. Round and round and round. And you may think, oh, I don't want to take the time to do garnishes, but like, we, you eat with your eyes. People are just going to be like, oh man, I got to go to this guy's house again. He made me this incredible <laughs> right? thing, right? So we're just going to wrap that around, hold it for two seconds. Look at that. Set that on the edge of the glass. Yeah, I saw you had the rosemary there, right? Eh? And we're going to add this rosemary. If anything, you can drop it in there and it's going to bring a ton of flavor. Or you can set it on the edge as a little bit of a garnish so that when you bring it up to your mouth, you get the you rosemary. Get the rosemary. As, you, as you know, if you plug your nose, right? Okay. 
you can't taste anything. Yeah. And so if, if you're drinking at the same time and your nose is smelling the rosemary, you'll taste it. Yeah, it's that bouquet. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch a little tip off this rosemary. Babe, look at how these... So this is what starts to happen. I'll, uh, just look at... So see how these are just starting... They're starting to firm up now a little bit. Uh, they're nice and they're tender and fully cooked. But see, they still stay on that vine. So as long as you're careful when we put those on that plate, we'll have a perfectly roasted tomato. Babe, as soon as you're done with code, you got to come over and check these out. So, there it is. That's the big easy. I mean, it's a simple drink, but let me tell you, it tastes incredible. And you got to, the technique is fun as well. I mean, when you're making drinks at a get-together, a party, a barbecue, the show is just as much about tasting the drink as it is seeing how it's made. And I mean, that one, you know, if you use all those techniques, people are going to love it. Check, check, out my, these out. check out my taters. Look at this. Ready? Yep. Look at this, watch this. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So you can see those potatoes, you can throw so much heat on them, they're still cooking. Now keep in mind, these are completely cooked. That's one of the things I gotta uh, remind you. So these were so these were blanched. So we started in cold water, skins on, yep. salted water, and with some bay leaves. And then brought up to the point where they're tender, where you can just pass a knife through them, and then in there they went. So they're fully cooked, but this adds a whole other element of flavor. Well, do you wanna do the honors? Please? I will do the honors. Hmm. So first of all, what I'm getting right away is that beautiful lemon brightens oh, it up yeah. so much, and the hit of rosemary yeah. is so nice. And the thing is, this isn't a, well, what can we say? This is not a, uh, this, this is a bit of, this is, a, this is both a man's drink and a woman's drink. I think oh, yeah. this is mild enough, yep. uh, and it's also strong enough that this could be, really be enjoyed. Well, the nice thing that we did there is that we added, we had the, the simple yeah. syrup, which is that sweetness, and then we added the Cointreau, which brings in the orange, yep. then you have the black lic licorice anise flavor from the absinthe. It's a really well-rounded drink. Well, and especially for black bear. Oh, this yeah. thing is going to be on point. One more thing, and I want to brag to all the Americans out there while I take my first sip here, because I'm Canadian, and the drinking age is 19. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason to black bear hunt. <laughs> okay, so oh, salt going on. Yeah, salt going yes. on. Yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat that grill pan. I got a little bit of preheating to do here on both. And start that one up too. Butter or? Yep, we'll do a little bit of, yeah, no, a good uh, tablespoon of butter as soon as that's warm. Okay. So we're going to get these rolling. Now keep in mind, trigonosis is not uh, an island in the south of France you want to visit. It's something that will be very nasty if you do not cook the black bear. But at the same time, not something to be afraid of. No different than you wouldn't go to the fridge, grab a raw chicken breast and take a big bite. Why? Salmonella. Yeah. Right? It's not, it's, while well, you have to be careful, you don't have to be afraid to cook black bear because of it. Yeah. You just got to make sure you cook it right and then you're good. Yeah. 165 degrees, cooked to well done, and this will be beautiful. Now, if you want, with some of the other cuts, if you're doing with this with anything else, you would want to marinate it. So, marinating, and we'll be dealing with that in the coming weeks when we get to doing the hind legs and a couple other things with the black bear, we'll be marinating it. But for this, this is the most tender, best part of that bear. Now I'm going to get this smoking hot. That's another thing I, that's still on, but uh, that, I, yeah, one of the things I love about, again, cast iron, just the simple fact that once that heat comes in, I can put these on and it's going to be on point. So let's get some, uh, let's get some rosemary in there. I feel like uh, another thing we're focusing on a lot this week is presentation. Yeah. You know, when you have, if you have friends over, you really want to impress them like what I did with this big easy drink here. And this with the rosemary on top, you got a nice cast iron pill, pan with grill lines, tomatoes on the vines, potatoes done in bear fat. You just got a long list of things that start to add up here. And I can't wait till you guys see this final dish because it's going to be amazing. So that's the thing, even if you, yeah, we're yakking here. Yes, question. There you go. All right, Wayne. There you go. And then nice. we also have a question. We're, what yeah. was the weight of the bear that was taken? So this one uh, butchered out and in the bin was about 150. 150. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was for us, it was uh, a great first bear. Um, one of the things you'll notice, we've got a 308 here. Um, 
uh, and I should actually let Dakota tell you, but you want to swap out with him? Yeah, so it was actually Dakota's bear, and uh, and actually, come on over here, babe. Just want to talk a little bit about. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, butter in the pan here, and a little bit of olive oil. Now this is for my greens. So I want a little bit of fat. The greens are going to break down pretty quick. You can see here I've got a nice chiffonade. Dakota, do you want to line up? Uh, actually, you know what? I'll, uh, I just want to show the chiffonade. Do you want to do the chiffonade here? Or yeah. Oh, uh, boy, it looks like a guitar in the pan. Yeah, I'll <laughs> show that in a minute. We'll just get this going here. Okay. So tons of tons of uh, flavor in that pan already. And literally all you have to do is just rain this down in on top of there. And this is a, something that's going to, you know, if you were just to eat this raw, slightly bitter. But in this case, we're going to make it nice and fragrant. A couple quick tosses, quick pops there, and a little bit of salt. Salt is really important. So we'll season it at this point. And then I got a good heavy bottom pan that I'm literally just going to turn down now. Because I want to make sure that I get that cooking away there. So we'll just turn it over, get it completely coated, and let that begin to cook. Now, you can see here, the pan is starting to smoke. Can you see that, babe? Yeah, you can see that a little bit. Okay. So let's get some of these down. Start by on it goes. And you'll notice we've got that piece of rosemary right on top. So we're going to leave that on there, and as we flip it down, it's literally going to smoke right on top of it. It's all about flavor development, guys. Every little bit matters. Look at that. Okay. So like you was explaining, the smoke from that rosemary is going to rise up into that meat. The same way if you're on a barbecue, that the smoke rises and surrounds your meat inside the barbecue. It just gives you a really simple option to yeah. smoke and add some really natural flavor without having to go too far. I don't want to crowd that grill pan. Yeah, I mean, the rosemary works so well because it is such a strong flavor. So it doesn't need much time underneath that meat to get it done. So let's show the chiffonade here very quickly. So as you're preparing your, uh, that's already starting to wilt. So watch those three up. And Bailey, let's show this here. So literally just gonna trim it and take those, the heavier stalks off. Of the uh, of the greens, and then uh, now the stalks you don't have to throw away. You can easily just uh, chop them up, but they would have to go in the pan first so that they get cooked because these are going to cook at different uh, times. And then literally just layer these leaves. Oh yeah, this makes it fun and easy and very very safe when you're using a knife. Now keep in mind. This, oh man, it smells good. Uh, now keep in mind, this Santoku knife from Zwilling, the one with the blonde handle, this is the one we're giving away tonight. So all you have to do is like the broadcast, share the broadcast, tag a friend, and then tell us why this should be yours. <laughs> with the tip on the edge, and just slight, slight pass through, keeping it all the same width. Take that, and we'll just literally, we're going to add this to the pan. So, I'm going to use an instant reef probe thermometer to check the, uh, the internal temperature, but this is basically going to be a, a one turn. So, I'm really going to let these cook. I've got them. The one thing I love about cooking with gas, if you have the option, is the fact that you get kind of like a restaurant quality kind of sear. Makes it beautiful. I'm still rendering down that fat. Have a look at that fat. Oh, it's yeah. still rendering fat. Just keeps melting down and down and down. So we're gonna hang on to every I last little bit of that. You, the, the smell coming well, off of that bear thigh is incredible. You know what I was just thinking while those are cooking? Yeah. If you're just joining us or joined us late, hold that up so they can see it pour stream in. I want you to see the purity of this beautiful bear fat. Look at that. Down a little bit. There. Look at that. Now, what I was saying before is it literally looks like vegetable oil. Look at that. Gorgeous. And what we do is once we add all this strain, we just take some cheesecloth and then strain it again to get any little small bits out. Then fully chill it and get it in the freezer. So now I season the first side. I'm going to season 
The second side again, I'm using this coarse sea salt. It's flaked, and I want to make sure that I put lots on there. I really want to get that seasoning deep into that bear meat. That's the nice thing about coarse salt is it does get deep, unlike, you know, iodized salt. It won't go deep into that meat. As the salt melts on top, it's going to seep down. And This isn't too thick, but it's going to get right down into the center of that meat. We just put on some fresh ground black pepper. Always use fresh ground. As that fresh ground hits that oil on the top of that meat, the heat is just going to activate that. Okay, we're in good shape over here. i got to show these. I'm going to get another... Uh, why don't you show us the gun, so we can tell yeah, us yeah. that story. So we'll tell you a little bit about this bear hunt. Yeah, go for it. Now this bear hunt was one that was down here, closer to where we live, about four hours away. And we did end up taking this bear with our 308. And the reason for it was we had three sites set up. The other two were about, one was actually a 12 yard site. We were up in tree sands. The other one was a 20 yard site, ground blind. And then this last one was a little bit further. It was kind of like, dude, the Look at, the, look at oh, that. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That's beautiful. Okay, sorry, I'm going to put it right there. <laughs> sorry, the interrupt was there. You go. Three and and this there. last site was actually a 60 yard site. The reason we had set up on this site was the monster. He had yes. been seen in that area, so we set up on that site. So it was a 60 yard shot. I practiced right before we headed up with my Bowtech carbon icon. So I practiced for that 60 yard shot. The first night we sat, I had the carbon icon in hand. The following day, we had a wicked wind. And this site, as you actually saw in the video there, this site was across a beaver pond. Yeah. So this, I was on this side of the beaver pond and the site where the bear was to be shot was on the other side of the pond. So what happened was we, this wind would just tunnel down this beaver pond. And so I put my target out at the site and I kept testing, testing, and that wind was just so brutal. It was that pushing it. it was I just really, it. I didn't feel comfortable. I could take a 60 yard shot in really good conditions, but this was not good conditions. It was... It was not good, and I no, mean, and just like you, we all have uh, real jobs where we yep. have to work really hard so we can go hunting. Yep. We had to come back home. We had to get uh, home. Yeah, we had to get home. But we're gonna, like I said, we're, we're back out yep. August fifteenth, just after August fifteenth, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be bow hunting. Uh, we'll be doing uh, spot and stock, and uh, hopefully adding to our freezer uh, because we've got literally I. We've been making, so we've, we're working on the Outdoor Chef Cookbook, yep. which will be coming out uh, in the fall. And so we're working on all these recipes. And, you know, uh, it's interesting. Once you start the process of wild to table, you know, your imagination just does not stop growing. Oh, no, no. There's Especially so many when things you're you out can there. do. When, when you're, when when you're, you're out, out there, there the, the ideas just start flowing because you're actually seeing your game and their natural habitat. And you're going, oh, man, they eat that, they... How can I add that into the dish? Can I add that? Can I not? Yeah. I have a funny slide. I think you have some t-shirt envy because Jeremiah says, John, why isn't this shirt offered on the Bowtech beer site? This one? Uh, oh, it's because... Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, Cameron Ains, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I need a little bit. I need another three or four years in the gym. These yeah. ones Love are, you, Cam. Yeah, these ones are actually just coming out. These are brand new. Brand new. They're coming. It's Bowtech Love. They're coming. They're they're working on apparel. They're working on gear because you know what? At Bowtech, we refuse to fall. You know, yep. and that's not just. Uh, I can tell you right now. Let me tell you a little something about Bowtech. These people are serious. They're serious about the outdoors. They're serious about women in the outdoors. Yep. They're serious about kids in the outdoors. And they're serious about guys in the outdoors. They are all about getting yep. families out in the world. getting you the tools you need to get the job done, whether it's walking around town and representing a brand, because that's what they're all about too, you know, loyalty. And it's a lifestyle. Yep. It's not just about hunting. It's about the, the brothers and sisters that you have, yep. that you have something very special and that you want to share with somebody else. Exactly. So that all came from, where's the t-shirt coming? They're coming! <laughs> I just want to take another quick peek at these potatoes. I never got a good peek as you shoved them into the camera. Look at how those potatoes are glazing up there. You got that thyme all over the potatoes. All of that just adds a burst of flavor. You can imagine you got these potatoes and all and these tomatoes and then you got Dakota's big easy drink there. Yeah, you see an antler horn. I tossed that lemon twist in there so I can get a little bit of that lemon taste. Yeah. Well, we can't show you drinking it on live TV. Hey, <laughs> this is live to Facebook, not to uh, network television. Yes. <laughs> and so Yvonne says, I would love a new knife for our to 
Nation. My amazing man and I go every second week, always looking for the best knife to cut our meat. I look forward to your live broadcast every week. Oh, that's and nice. I'm cooking my dinner along with watching the live broadcast. That's awesome, and I mean, eventually, that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to like tell you what we're gonna cook. We'll tell you what the ingredients are. We'll they do a special. With us. We'll do a special. Actually, that's a great idea. We'll do a special. Love that. We'll tell you what the ingredients are before. We'll tell you the, the the meat. We'll tell you some different options just in case you don't have that protein, and we'll cook it along. We'll go a little bit slower so that we can cook it alongside you. Vine tomatoes on. And that's why you let them cool. If you try and do it immediately when they're hot, they that, vine, that vine will pop right off those tomatoes if you try and do it while they're scalding hot. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to pick up some of this, what I was telling you about. So what's happening here is you think, oh, that's just the oil. Most of it is actually a tomato water. I'm literally going to scoop some of that up and we're going to put some of this on. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just like in the wild when I'm in the kitchen, nothing gets wasted. Gorgeous. I'm loving this recipe, man. It looks so beautiful. I think we'll finish that with just a tiny little bit. There's lots of nice salt on there. Just a little bit of salt to finish that. And then let's have a look at some of these gorgeous potatoes. I don't know if I can grab this yet. Woo! Nope. It's hot. It's hot. Okay, so let's take some of these babies. Now. How's our greens doing? I think they're yeah, they're they're probably ready. You want to give yep. them? Do you want to try? You can always be eating when you're cooking. Always good. Yep. Okay. So, not, oh man, they smell so good. We we'll put a nice mound of greens here. When it comes to collard greens, you really don't want to overcook them because they start to get this really bitter flavor to them. Yeah. There's a really nice texture going on there right now that I love. Okay, so collards on, and then listen, we're going to go with some of these beautiful taters. Oh man, let me see, here, we'll put the taters over here. That looks so good. Honestly, this is, this is, a, this is a bit of a hungry man's, hungry man, hungry woman's meal we got going on here. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, that yeah, sounds yeah, great. I'm Thank you, Yvonne. That. You know, that's it. That's, you know, Yvonne just literally proved what the kitchen life is all about. Yep. She proved that it's about this conversation that we have going. It's about getting people connected and getting ideas connected so we can all have a better time in the outdoors. Yeah, I'm loving this recipe. This is what the outdoors is about, right? Creating a family, not just your own family, but creating this family that we have in the outdoors, right? Yep. Outdoors men and women coming together and having each other's backs. Okay. And we so, got your back when it comes to cooking food. That's right. So <laughs> listen, we've been talking for over an hour. So I'll tell you what now, Bailey, have a quick look at this. I gotta show you this beautiful. So I've made a single turn, but you can see in this when you see that. Start, you're starting to get some of the juices coming up. Now, I'd love to, if this was beef, boy, these would almost be ready to come off. We've got to crisp up that bacon. So what I'm going to do now is I've got this oven going. So if you want to get it for me. Yep. So I've got that nice sear going. What I want is I want to finish the bear and the bacon. So I'm going to pop this in. And let's do, we got 450. That's going to crisp that up beautifully. Yep. So listen, what we'll do is we will continue to cook this and we will post this beautiful photo of, of this incredible recipe and uh, we'll get it back to you. But just before you go, I want to remind you about today's giveaway. So uh, this gorgeous blonde handled, uh, so the blonde is oak wood, it's like a piece of art. Uh, this is a Santoku knife, it's got the beautiful dimples down the side which make it perfect for slicing so that nothing sticks. And uh, we're going to be giving one of these away to you, and we give something away every week. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing we love to do. We know your time is valuable, and you're learning along with us, but we like to give something back to you. That's why we love to do giveaways. Yeah, so all you have to do is like the post, share it, tag one of your friends, and then tell us why you think you should get this. The only reason we say that is because we love to hear your stories. Love stories. We, lo we love hearing uh, your hunting stories. By the way, don't forget that you can go to Bowtech Let's Eat yep. on the Bowtech site. You can see all these recipes plus many more. Yep. And uh, My Outdoor TV. Yep. So all of the Outdoor Chef, we got have a couple dozen recipes on My Outdoor TV. 
If you haven't checked it out yet, get over there and check out My Outdoor TV. It is the Netflix awesome. for the outdoors world. It's the outdoor, it's everybody, honestly, you know, I gotta be honest, I never thought I'd be bookended by like Jim Shockey and Jim Burnworth, but it helps me sleep better at night, I can tell you that right now. I love it so much, and we're so grateful to be there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah, definitely. By the way, so our last name's Collins. So if you use the name Collins on My Dirt TV, you'll get one month for 99 cents. Yep, and yeah. I mean, you'll want to check it out. Your first month's 99 cents, but I know you'll stay because I'm addicted. Like, yeah. You gotta be. You, gotta you be can careful, stream. Yep. You can stream, and you can download it. Download so, it so, so you don't need to use data. I mean, you know those long days in the blind when you got like a twelve-hour sit, but you're going in before dawn, before even shooting hours. You yeah. just sit and watch a little bit of my outdoor. TV. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then you'd be like, oh, that, oh, I'm doing that wrong. Oh boy. Okay, now yeah. <laughs> back that up. Okay, we'll do that again. You but. gotta be careful though. I watched three seasons of Uncharted straight, and my dreams started to become narrated <laughs> by Jim Shockey. <laughs> I was awesome. walking down, I was like, yeah, I was going to tell you, don't go down there, going down that path. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to check your wind. And I was like, what's going on? Well, well, if you got have anybody who's in your ear, I guess it's better than I guess that's true. Anyway, uh, right. we just want to say thank you. We're very grateful for you joining us. Uh, we love nothing more than coming to you live. Please share this with your friends, with yep. your family, uh, anybody who loves the outdoors or loves to hunt. Uh, because we do too. And keep in mind, The Outdoor Chef is a story. It is the making of hunters. It's everybody in our family being in introduced to this incredible outdoors world, taking the views of professional chefs and professional techniques and applying them to wild to table. Uh, so it's a great honor for us. Yeah. Let us know what you think. If you make this recipe, take a picture, tag us in it. We'll share it. We'd love to see that stuff, guys. Yeah. But uh, I think I don't think I can avoid trying these potatoes another second. Yeah, don't touch this because this is the picture I got. You'll have to try this try one. one and those. careful, it's going to be hot as hot as can be. Okay, we'll see you next week, 7 p.m. Eastern. Join us for Surefire yeah. Wednesdays. You want a fork? Look at this beautiful spice rub. I'm gonna gently lay this down inside the pan, sauteing it so that both sides are nice and golden brown. And then I'll pop it in the oven to finish it up. You'll notice I haven't used any eggs or breadcrumbs. The proteins will naturally bind when cooked. I'm gonna keep this seasoning simple. Just a little bit of salt, some pepper, Simple. I want to taste this elk. I don't want to hide any of the flavors. I want to taste it. I put all that work into getting it. I don't want to hide those flavors. I want to taste it. Incredible finish. Is there anything simpler than cooking in one pan? Whole roasting this line caught wild trout with all of these vegetables for me is the most perfect way to honor this incredible fish. This is my first black bear. We're here hunting on public land, and let me tell you, this is a night I'm never gonna forget. What the old timers taught me, it came true tonight, and we got this beautiful, beautiful black bear. Yeah.